flipping through vinyl albums. Okay. Back in the heavy metal section. Why am I here? Though? Why am I? Why am I in this video? <laughs> through flipping through, and then you see the sixty-foot-tall, four-armed demon dude with abs of steel. He's they're not talking. They're not talking about me. Yeah, that's for sure. Crazy grill up in the teeth area. Yeah, that's not this me. This force of nature that's coming to like wipe all things away. And then he shoots those big spiky rocks up through the ground. He's not concerned. We are not a problem for him. I've never heard of this band, but this looks awesome. <laughs> Choosing where we go next is something that we oh, spend a lot of time on. And we try to settle on a word or a mood or a feel for the next year's story. So when we decided we wanted to go back to Oblivion, we knew right away that Dagon had to be a part of it because he was such a huge part in Test 4. Mm. It's as much about how he's trying to recruit allies in Blackwood as it is about anything else because he needs the help. And so no, that's my fear. kind of the political and cultural conflicts that Elder Scrolls is known for. Hey, that's where we just did it. a style guide, and that style guide includes the themes of the zone. And for uh, both Black Black alive. Deadlands, I recognize the UI. was certainly in the forefront and the background of almost everything we did. Mayor's Dagon is the Prince of Destruction, the Prince of change. change. All those words mean something very specific to him, but he's a bit of an enigma, I think, to anybody else. You're always looking at, you know, the themes of what a prince represents, their ultimate goals, how they're going to achieve it, and then how is that affecting the everyday life of the people? Is he in the theater? The culture, I like, like that. Area. What happened to Daddy Dagon? Daddy Dagon. You know, also Jinxie. Thanks for some two months now. That makes the antagonist story really compelling. Even if he's not present, this you feel know, touches cool. of his influence everywhere because everything that happens is kind of a result of him. I don't think that he does what he does because he's Lord mean Master. or because he's evil. He does <laughs> what he does because that's what he where's is. Your, where's the Lord Master fingerprints? Destruction is just a part of reality, right? Like, nothing lasts forever. I guess. You're the prince of destruction. You're kind of the prince of everything. Yeah, I guess. Sense, right? Like, you have <laughs> is that just entropy? a part of everything. Oh, whatever. Oh. I had done Dragonhold as a DLC before, but we did that entirely in the office. I knew this chapter it's a lot bigger there's a lot more to do in general mm -hmm. and then i was like oh man we're gonna do this from home how are we gonna do this everybody was learning Jesus. on the fly how to collaborate remotely so yeah, there was a lot of meetings look at this like, look at this setup dude what the she's a gamer <laughs> how are we gonna do this you see this everybody wait a minute was learning on the fly how to bro she's got a better setup than me <laughs> collaborate remote look at this Literally better than me. <laughs> what the heck? So there was a lot of meetings with okay. like muted mics. And then I love that view. Muted. Like, look at the background. Of that. I love the plant. Oh my god, really, really nice. Muted mics and then whatnot. This gets that kind of like height thing that you were talking about. See. Oh, is this like their? Uh... Is this Slack? This looks like Slack. Or is it this? No, I'm pretty sure it's Slack. Yeah, this is this must be one of their like dev meetings. DJ. Yeah. Look up. Look up. Look up. Look oh up. God. See, there you go. Does. What's the point? Yeah. <laughs> this year was 100% completely at home. How do we be collaborative in an All environment home. that is really not suited to be collaborative? Jesus. In a studio this size, we're talking hundreds of people all connected in a connected environment. IT is kind of the lifeblood that makes all of that work. If you can imagine something you really hate in front of you, just, yeah, and just play with that. It was kind of like <laughs> glory and chaos at Yo. the same time. Everything's like a new frontier and just every moment is a new issue. Oh, did you get the light go off? Oh, the sound design. It was enough to Yo, that's so cool. Here. Now I need to maintain them at their homes. In truth, in the end, a lot of these folks are gamers. Kind of reconcile that, like, they know what they're doing. 
Wait, is he Dragon is he Black. editing with Literally a controller? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It is a huge undertaking to coordinate all the different groups that are responsible for putting this together. Mm -hmm. I'm there kind of to help guide and give them a, a map to go off of uh, as far as story and location, stuff like that. And it's up to the designers and the writers and encounters and art and everyone else who works on these things uh, to kind of take that and run with it. When we start any character, we have to do research. And we have to figure out how is this character going to work I had okay. my fourteen-year-old take pictures of me, and I had like, <laughs> I had my five-year-old's like toy weapons, <laughs> and I would like hold them, like I would think big, and I would hold them, and I would do a couple different poses, oh. and then I would take them into Photoshop and draw over them and put them together, so <laughs> it would be like sets of poses together with forearms. The okay. concepts tend to be in two D. It's up to us as the character artist to go in and, and add all the extra heavy detail. We spend a lot of time researching and learning anatomy. So we're able to take that anatomical knowledge and, and try to come up with an idea of how it would actually work. Mm. Anatomy of where and how those arms are connected was a big part of what the experimentation kind of exploration was. We had That's to check cool. punching, we had to check hitting, all the things that you would expect from Dagon. I'll take a character and I always like to put them in the zone that they're going to be, so that way I can make sure the lighting is perfect, the textures look good in that environment. Damn. How do you art direct around such a distinct and universally red palette, right? Like, what are we going to put into there to make it worth walking around in and interesting and, and give the content guys something to play with. There was one particular page, I believe, from Dagon's book that has a red triangle and other symbols on it. And I just, I sat down and I drew from that page for an afternoon. These are symbols that are directly from Dagon, right? I wanted to try to infuse that into the rest of the designs as much as I possibly could. The horns, the horn-like shapes, all of that molds into the architecture. It all folds into what we're trying to do with the rocks and the environment and the biome. The Deadlands is a, a physical manifestation of his will and his, you know, his values. It's pretty nice to accomplish magic circle that we have. Everyone and the, this, this right uh, everyone being home. Must, those be, must have been frustrating. I see that and suddenly I have more story ideas the scene, the end now scenes, I've got this yeah. space and I can see like the setting of the space and it inspires me then change some of the story beats. As the quest started coming in and the level design came in, the story had to shift. Okay. I remember working really closely with Michelle on it and you write and you play it and you get feedback and you edit and you play it and you get feedback and you edit and you play it but that's that's the fun that part sounds tedious <laughs> you're just kind of whittling away at something until it's perfect okay when you work with something that people know and love it's a little intimidating right like you can't screw up mayroon's day gone early on talked to the encounter designer that i was gonna be working with and i was like you know i don't really know what's going on for your like idea for this fight or what your team is planning for it and he said oh well, we're gonna have a you know, 300 foot Dagon that the player goes to. Why am I here though? And why am I in this video? Like, oh, like, that's a funny, <laughs> I don't funny know. joke. Having the entire year story culminate in a fight with a Daedric. Oh, it's Finn. Is, is kind of the dream when you're working on an Elder Scrolls game. <laughs> he can be the evil. He can be the big bad. He can be somebody that you look at and you go, I don't want to be in league with him. Now, that doesn't stop Jeez. some people from wanting to be in league with him. He really sets the tone of everything that you fight, right? Because they're his minions, so they abide by his rules, they serve him. A lot of the monsters that we worked on ended up getting that sort of treatment. We call it the Dagon treatment. Mm. It greatly impacted the Ruinach. He is created to be the embodiment of Mehrun's Dagon, the voice and the sword of Mehrun's Dagon. So that directly influenced all Jesus. of their abilities and stuff. These guys were pretty cool, though. They, yeah. they spin around in place and destroy things. We wanted something beastly and something threatening and something that would feel like a real fight. Chaotic, hectic, scary nature that is Mehrun's Dagon, and we embody that. Uh, in some pretty brutal ways. <laughs> because he, as a character, says, as like an entity is so big, we had to decide when to um, present him at meaningful moments to the player and okay. um, how those moments are going to impact the overall story. 
all of our scenes that have been crafted around his appearance either show him breaking something or being just generally menacing to the people around him. He's not a slow character, but he's just a really large, deliberate individual, and we have to carry him that way through all the experiences. They have this huge weight. Um, they're working against gravity. And then you have to figure out a way to represent that in sound. I'll do like a 10 second long arm swipe or something, like something really simple. You have to make that impact and then put all the detail in this like 10 second long tail. And that is actually what gives it the size, more so than the loudness or anything. It's all the detail in these long sounds. That's pretty cool. I love, I love sound design. Talks, he doesn't talk really fast like that. He talks like that. Mortals. <laughs> Lehman and I and Becky were talking about how do we make Dagon different from the other princes. We wanted to do an accent that was unexpected. Can they flee withstand the rushing waters of a deluge? Can a sapling fend off the flames of a raging wildfire? <laughs> Pretty good. No. Dagon's voice should sound deep and powerful, kind of like a volcano that's on the verge of erupting. And Dagon is yeah, so right. huge that we don't want him shouting. He, he basically fills up the sky. And so sort of physically, I always think of like, so sort of like this channel in the back of my neck where that sort of like, that sort of like, whatever that sound is, that, that's sort of a part of him. It's always kind of boiling around his voice, like a storm, you know, like that's constantly swirling around. Him. And so then whatever comes out sort of comes out all in the focused energy. Like his presence, his personality, his desires, it's so, I mean, it's literally world consuming. So you don't often get to play somebody with that kind of vision and with that kind of potential. He has to be all empowering and he really doesn't think that you're anything for him to worry about, but also, you know, he has to, he has to sound a little scary because he's big. <laughs> the guy doesn't exist really until he's got a voice and sounds and everything and then he's like a real presence. Run, little maggots. Free from the god of destruction. <laughs> Typically, when I'm writing the Elder I'll Scrolls go. orchestra music, those sounds are fairly straightforward. You know, a violin sounds like a violin, and a French horn sounds like a French horn. But in Deadlands and then in the dungeons as well, I took the liberty of doing things like taking string section recordings and treating them as a sound design source. In the overworld, there's a soprano singing. Mm -hmm. When you get into the underworld, you know, I can grab, even sometimes grab that same source. Like, let me take that song that she was singing up there, and then I'm gonna take it down here and just destroy it. I'm gonna do all this <laughs> stuff to it. Okay. Interesting. They, they've been badly burned and uh, mixed back in. It's almost metal. And uh, that kind of tone and that kind of feel and vibe carries all the way throughout. You can feel those heavy undertones of Mayrin's Dagon and his influence. Super happy with how Mayrin's came out. The first couple of times we saw people play through a main quest and hit those first couple of moments where you get to get a glimpse of Mayrin and you Rich. hear his voice. Yeah. Oh, is this what they showed me? What are you? His model is so cool and it's huge. Damn it, spoilers, I haven't done this quest. <laughs> Look at that big boy. Swinging that ax. When you watch the Twitch streams and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, look at that. Oh no. It's huge, you know. <laughs> so it definitely gets us excited and motivated and uh, everything we do is, is for the fans. Okay. I love to see people okay, they're in the PV. Take on the challenges and figure out the, the puzzles that we throw at them. I'm Kumi! I'm Kumi! Really makes oh, it's it all worth it is just seeing the fans like reacting to a character. <laughs> I'm cooming. I think anybody would notice. <laughs> They're really supportive. They oh, yeah, they, they put the heart rate in. Fan art of any community I've ever seen. Repeat, V. 
Dagon looms large. Oh, this is this is about the, the so story, we right? We wanted to make sure that we were paying off that lineage. We weren't just cradling this flame. We were feeding it, stoking it, and making it burn brighter, and something that could be passed on to other installments of the Elder Scrolls. I think anyone who is creative always gets excited when they get to see something come to life. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. Do I give thumbs up? I'm just gonna type it. Now shows the 2022 chapter. I'm Kumi. <laughs> Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. There we go.